I passed the Azure AI Fundamentals exam in just about four hours without studying and by just taking practice tests. And in this video, I'm gonna go through the whole process of how I approach this, my preparation for the exam and how the exam went from start to finish. And I'm also gonna share with you everything that I learned from taking this AI 900 exam. And I think this year is the best time for you to get your Azure AI certifications. Because if you're looking up to level your position or salary, or if you're looking to just add AI skills to your CV, I think this is the best way to do it. Because nowadays it's harder than ever, you know, to move jobs or advance your career. And AI knowledge paired with cloud knowledge can definitely give you an extra advantage compared to others. I think both are required skills for any developer, for any data scientist or for any data analyst. And I think this is a required skill for pretty much any other tech professional nowadays. And the sooner that you start on this journey, the more leverage that you're going to have compared to other engineers. The Azure AI Fundamentals is a beginner level certification if you want to become an AI engineer. So it's the best place to get started if you want to be one. So in this video, we're going to cover a lot. We're going to start with how I prepared and the lessons that I learned from the practice tests that I took. Then I'm going to talk about the full exam experience in detail. And at the end, I'm going to talk about all of the lessons that I learned by taking the exam and also what I recommend so that you're going to pass it with the highest possible score. By watching this video till the end, I'm going to make sure that you're going to know everything there is to know. And the learnings from this certification will apply to your preparation for any other Azure Cloud certification. So make sure that you pay attention because I'm going to try to be as detailed as I can. Two days ago, I decided that I wanted to get all of the Azure certifications. So Azure AI Fundamentals felt like a good way to start. As an AI engineer, I thought it would be a very good test for me to see if I can pass it without studying at all. I looked at the curriculum and I decided that it's doable because I've been working in this industry for a long time and I've been using Azure extensively. What better way to test myself than just to take the exam without going through the documentation. As I jumped over preparing for the exam, the next step was to practice for it. And I think practice tests are extremely useful because I've been using them extensively for other certifications. So here it definitely made sense to test myself out. I took my first practice test on my phone in the morning, you know, when I was out for a coffee at Costa Coffee. And I have to say that the UI on the phone actually works very well. And you can see it looks great. And you can just take practice tests pretty much whenever you want all the time, wherever you are. And I got 88%. And then I realized that there's still some things that I needed to pay attention to. I had a bit of FOMO in order to get through the test quickly. So at times I didn't read the questions properly. For example, in question 14 here, I understood the question to mean the exact opposite of what it was asking. So I chose the labels instead of the two obvious features. So make sure that you read the questions properly and take your time because nobody's going to rush you, right? And you have enough time. It took me 20 minutes here and I got distracted a lot during the test. So you have plenty of time. The next lesson that I learned from this test was that it's good to go through the explanations for the correct answers because these are super helpful because they pretty much tell you everything that you need to know. And if you want to dive deeper, the links should be helpful. I avoided to check the links though because my ambition was to not grow through the documentation at all. But I did look through the explanations as I took more and more tests. And this turned out to be enough in order to solidify my understanding. And then I took another test, right? And this time on my laptop. And I got 92%. And this was a very good improvement because I had some previous questions that I learned from the explanations that I went through. For example, I had a question like number 35 here, right? That I didn't really know the answer to. And I chose minus one because it actually felt like a correct option. I knew the confidence score was between 0 and 1, and I thought that minus 1 should be correct. But it wasn't, so I learned something from the explanation. Again, the explanations are great. The next practice test was even better, and I got 96%, so I decided to book the exam. So the conclusion about preparing for the exam. For me, I like to take more practice tests, you know, take practice tests continuously, and then check the answers and the explanations at the end of each practice test. Because this way you can actually just go directly to the sections that you actually need in order to learn about, right? So instead of just getting lost in the documentation, you can just learn exactly what matters. Again, this only works if you have prior experience in that area. So if you're a software engineer that doesn't have a foundation in machine learning, then it's best to go through the documentation properly. Because otherwise the exam is going to be too hard to just rely on practice tests. I'm going to cover the exam process and learnings next. But if you're already on your cloud engineering path, you can check out getthatbadge.com a learning platform that helps you prepare for cloud certification exams. It's currently in beta and we offer both practice exams and AI assistance to help you learn faster. I'm going to update the AI 900 exam practice test in the next days because I want to add better questions. So by the time you're going to see this video, the AI 900 practice tests should be the best on the market. So if you're looking for a way to support this channel, this is a way. 
you can support a decision first and you can also support yourself by learning a new skill. Now let's go through the exam process. Registering is straightforward and if your company is eligible for discounts, you can definitely check that by entering your work email here. So if you're eligible for a discount, you can just apply the discount and you're gonna get a percentage off. I think this is great and it applies at the end where you actually need to make the payment. Unfortunately, the discount is applied before tax, but it's still good, right? So check with your employer if they have a partnership with Microsoft. I chose online with OnView and here you can see exactly what you need in order to prepare for the exam. You're going to need your ID and you're going to need to learn about the acceptable spaces as well. The acceptable spaces are just the room that you're going to have to take the exam in, right? So they're very particular about the desk setup and the surroundings. So make sure that you have a good one. You go through all of these check marks and now you can just book the date and time. Next, you can just check the details again and just proceed to checkout. The process is super simple and I got all excited and I just booked the AI-102 as well in 10 days from now. Just to get a little bit of motivation to continue immediately after I pass the AI fundamentals. And then after I booked the AI-102 exam, I got even more excited and I just wanted to book the data scientist one as well. And I thought why not just book four or five exams in the next months just to stay busy. But unfortunately, you can only book two exams in advance. It would have been really nice if they would let you book all of them. Anyway, I have to remember just to book the next exam after I finish this video. Now that I booked the exam, in the evening I decided to do a couple of more tests again, right? So I can sleep well knowing that I'm ready to go. I got 294%, so I decided to actually wake up a little bit earlier before the exam so I can do a little bit more tests, right? So I can try and aim for that 100%. And in the morning, right before the exam, I took another one and then I really, really paid attention to it. And as you can see here, the last take was a clean 100%. So I thought I'm gonna just wrap it up there, you know, with that win and I'm just gonna start the exam. So overall, what? Six tests, right? With an average completion time of 20 to 25 minutes. So let's say three hours, right? Plus going through, I don't know, the answers and the explanations so we can make it around four hours with booking the exam as well. Let's look at the exam process end to end and the lessons that I learned by taking the Azure A Fundamentals exam. Before starting the exam, it's super, super important to run a system test in order to make sure that everything is running properly. Here you can check your microphone, the speakers and your camera, you know, so that they all work well. It also checks for network connectivity and afterwards it checks to see that you don't have any other windows open. I had an issue here because I closed Google Chrome, but for some reason, right, the check just kept showing that it was open and I closed it from the activity monitor. I closed it via the command line, but still it was just showing that it was open. After restarting the laptop, it actually worked. So if you run into this type of problems when the system checks for open windows, it's best to just simply restart your laptop. All right, so now your setup is ready and you can just take the exam. The whole process is pretty smooth. At the beginning, you have a very nice checking process that really goes through everything that you need to know. You need to take a photo of your government ID and you're gonna to need to take photos of your desk and of the surroundings. So make sure that the desk is clean and that you don't have anything within reach. And right before it starts, you actually get a reminder of the exam rules. And to be fair, these are great because it really feels proper, right? You cannot record, you cannot photograph, you cannot have anybody around you, but most important, you cannot mumble. <laughs> to, to be fair, I did this a bit when I was reading and I was thinking out loud, you know, as I was thinking about the questions and I was really told off, you know, during the exam. So definitely keep your mouth shut and don't mumble. At the beginning, I waited for about 20 minutes for the test to start because it kept saying that I had a connection issue and then it just put me back in a queue. And I think this was on their end because my internet is pretty stable, but it was a little bit annoying, right? But it's because you're eager, eager, you know, to, to get started and you just keep waiting in that purgatory. Then the proctor actually called me because they needed to see my desk. And I moved my laptop around and so that they can see every corner. And then they asked me to unplug my extra monitor that I had on the table. I also had them to show that I unplugged it and also I had to remove a post-it that I had on the monitor. I had a little sketch with my cat, right? And I had to just remove that and, and, and throw it away. So they're really, really particular about your surroundings. And this is something that I really like because I'm sure there are a lot of people that kept trying to figure out ways to cheat in these exams. Please learn properly and never, never cheat. It makes no sense, right? Because you really need to know what you're learning because the certificate is not enough. It looks nice, right? And you can prove your knowledge to a certain extent, but it's not enough. You still need to be a complete professional. 
Okay, so at the beginning, you know, they ask you a couple of questions to assess your level of proficiency in AI in general and in AI workloads on Azure. And I was a little bit cocky here and I chose the very high option. But then as I was taking the test, I was thinking like maybe they chose the difficulty level of the questions based on those answers. And I was thinking this when I actually had some questions that I, that I had to think about, right? They weren't hard, right? But they were formulated in such a way that they can be a little bit confusing. And I was like, mate, like, oh man, I should have chosen something like medium knowledge because then maybe they would have given me some easier questions. Of course, I hope that this doesn't happen, but anyway, it would be very, very hard to test. Maybe in the AI 102, I'm going to choose just medium level of proficiency and see how it feels. But clearly, that one is definitely going to be harder. So when you take the exam, choose your level wisely, just in case. Question-wise, I had a lot of questions around OCR and regression. The test covered a lot of OCR, generative AI, Azure OpenAI, general machine learning, a lot of AI vision, and of course, NLP. And based on the practice tests that I kept passing, and having in mind that I passed the last one with 100%, I was really, really surprised that the actual exam was a lot harder than I expected. I didn't really get the question directly from these practice tests, but I got some variations of them. So the practice tests were really good because they were very helpful in preparing me for this exam. Overall, the AI 900 exam is not an easy one to pass, especially if you don't have experience with both machine learning and AI and Azure services and workloads. So if you don't have that experience, you need to go through the documentation properly and you need to learn a lot because it covers a lot of diverse topics. In total, I took six practice tests and I didn't read the docs at all because I really wanted to test myself as raw as possible. But I don't recommend this if you don't really have any real world experience in the field. And even then, the exam can be harder than what you can expect. And I passed it with 900 and it made sense, right? Because I had maybe five or 10% that I was a little bit unsure. So overall, this was a great experience. And I'm going to follow up with more impressions on this, but now I got to go because I need to prepare for the AI 102 exam. I got that booked in 10 days from now. So if you found this information helpful, give it a like and definitely subscribe for more impressions on the next certifications that I'm going to take. I'll see you in the next one.